cast of wisdom in Sebo. Today we are dealing with an interesting topic and we want to inspire you. The topic is your identity. Is it a maker or is marrying you? Identity maker or Mara. Do you know who you are? Do you know what your identity is? Because we have seen a lot of people who have marred their own identity. So, because of uh, pressures from the society, the demands of the society have made people the pressures, made people to, you know, embark on social vices and things that does not tell good of their identity. But today, I believe that you will discover who you are. We are going on a short break. And when we come back, I will be unveiling the guest for today's uh, topic. So don't go away, we will be right back. Identity maker or mara, and I have three wonderful guests with me to do justice. They say young motivational people in wisdom class from close to me here. Her name is uh, Tonya Nakwe Ogechi Joy. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you for being part mm -hmm. of what we do. And the next one, also wonderful motivational speakers with wisdom class, Sandra Daffer. Thank you for being part of what we do. And uh, an astute one, also for Wisdom Plus Motivational Speaker, Friends Emmanuel Uzochuku. God bless you. And back to our viewers, we want to look at the topic of the day. Is your identity making you or is it uh, marrying you? So let's begin with uh, the first case here. You will answer the question, what does identity mean? Thank you very much, sir. Well, I will start with a quote from Oscar Wilde. He says, be yourself, everyone else is already taken. And another quote by him, it says, life isn't about finding yourself. Life is about creating yourself. When we say identity, Identity is what makes a person. Identity is the qualities, the expressions, the looks, the beliefs that makes a person. It is what distinguishes you from another person. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. I, I love that. What distinguishes you from another person? Perhaps everyone will have something to add, but you also look at it that does it make you or does it mar you? I want us to begin to look at it. Tell us what identity is and how it makes you. Thank you very much, sir. I must say identity, when we mention the word identity, it's talking about what truly makes you up as a person. The character you possess that makes you far different from another person. And talking about where identity marry you or make you, the identity can is a character you prostrate to the world and how they view you. When we think about identity, how it makes you, the character you prostrate, like let's give a case study of a person that always comes most of the time, always all the time, is always quarreling, so you always see in each and every corner quarreling. That person can be tagged as a troublesome person. And in that case, the identity you are prostrating is marrying your image. And also, how it can make you. How you, you like someone that's always sure and happy hand, always willing to help. Like I, I will give example of you. You always helping others. I can say yes, you are a good man, and that and that is making you. Thank you so much. <laughs> now over to Prince Emmanuel. Thank you very much. Do you have control over how you shape your identities? Yes, before I go into that, I think I want to talk about, I want to break it down a little. 
talking about identity. Now, I've discovered that an individual can have several identities. Now, who are you to the society? Who are you at your place of work? Okay, let me just break it down in just a step further. Now, for example, the purpose doctor in the church is known as a pastor, right? Of course. In the society, he's known as the purpose doctor. If you're having issues with discovering yourself, you can meet him and he can help you out with that. And then his place of work is a medical doctor. Not everyone knows him as these three things I just mentioned. Some know him as a motivational speaker. All right, so you can be, um, you can have different identities. So in my own definition, I can say that identity is who you are in different spheres of life. All right, and so you asked a question talking about um, how we can actually manage something like that, right? How we can work, work how can we control and sh or shape our identity? Okay, fine. Now, we need to understand that we have perfect control of our identity and we can actually shape it. We shape this by, number one, we should know who we are. A lot of people, they, let me say, they sometimes forget who they are and then they get involved in things that can actually uh, mar their identity and make them um, who they are not. Alright, so what I'm trying to say is, you have to guide your heart in what you consume from the social media, from people around you, and there are so many factors that can actually mar you. So, for you to guide your heart and for your identity to make you, you have to, number one, be conscious of who you are. Number two, consistently build on yourself because we learn every day. You have role models, you have mentors that you follow up. So these things, by doing them every time, you are building competence. So that whatever, that's why the Bible talked about renewing your mind. You're not just renewing your mind. He said renew your mind because the days are evil. That means there are some things that can actually come to alter who you are. So you being conscious of who you are is something that can actually help you to maintain that good identity that you possess. Thank you so much. <laughs> now you talked about we having several identities, but they all sum up to one person. Yes. So I am looking at it this way. The elephant has several parts. When you touch the body, it looks like a wall. When you touch the, 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 the trunk or whatever, it looks like a pipe. Depending on the area that you look at it, you can give it a name. But what we are saying is that this is an elephant. So it's about knowing precisely who you are. God is in three persons, there is God. You must know exactly who you are, your uniqueness. We are different from each other. You must discover your own identity. And I believe again that you must know God. Know who God is. Knowing God helps you to know who you are. Every day you, you go on a journey of self-discovery. Knowing exactly who you are. So we are going on a short break and when we come back I want comments from the audience and questions. Don't go away, we'll be right back. <laughs> Welcome back to Wisdom Plus TV series. I remain the purpose doctor. We have been talking about identity making or marry you. So we have wonderful people in the audience. You have a contribution to make. I can see two hands up. So let's listen to David. I remain so Emmanuel uh Emmanuel. Um talking about identity, you the fact remains that you can never fake who you are. It's either you are living for who you are or you are living against yourself. For example, you are known to be a pastor and outside the church, you are known to be the poorest son human being. So that shows that your identity is not traceable. So what I would say about identity is something we can really trace to a particular thing. Who is this person? Who does he really is in the society? Is he really the person they describe him to be or they describe her to be? So identity is something that really determines or show 
who the particular person really is. Thank you. Thank you so much. Let's listen to Reverend Okokoyo. Thank you very much. My name is Reverend Philip Okokoyo. I want to I want to say something about what you have said, like you have been a material identity or modern. And you try to say that elephant, is, if you touch elephant like this, is hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's hard, it's elephant. I think I, I agree with him. And you talk about God, three in one God. So you can know God to be the merciful God. So you can know him to be the provider, the healer. I get the deliverer. So you, when he said it, I was thinking about it. So I think I want to just agree with that. I think he has a point and he's right. Because even though God is God, so the people, God is a merciful God. God is their provider. God is their healer. God is their this. God is their God is the same God. Thank you so much. We let's take precious. You have been raising your hand. Let's take your comments and we move over. Thank you very much. Uh, what I want to say is that uh, when we are talking about identity, we should also look at niche, carving out a niche. Because let's take for instance. Uh, in my own line of field as a nurse, you, you see that there are some people that, okay, what they are being identified for is that they are into the media. Some are bloggers, some are in the clinical areas, so just mm -hmm. different area, but still as a nurse. So you should be able to carve out a niche for yourself, then you now be identified in that area that you have carved out. Thank, Thank you, you so much for that. We are talking about identity. I believe that if anyone confronts you at any point and asks you who you are, the first thing you mention is your name. I am so, so, so. And so that identifies you. And when we are looking at identity, you must also remember where you came from the son of this, the daughter of this, you must know. And so you can tell them I'm the, I'm the son of the president. So you must know who you are. You can be the son of the president and when they say, whoa, you talk, you run away. That does not tell good of you because you don't know who you are. And right now we are looking at it at another perspective. The identity, somebody talk about the niche you have created for yourself. How is he making you? He could marry you. That is important because we face a lot of circumstances. We face a lot of situations. Your circumstances have changed your life. It has pummeled you. So instead of looking beautiful, you, you are having punches here and there with stars. Your identity has been altered. There's a saying that when life gives you lemon, you make lemonade out of it. So please. We still want you to look at how your identity has mad me. Okay, thank you very much, sir. Um, I would like to like tell us like a short story I've told you before about someone that was like the person came into a place and someone knew the person from somewhere before. Like the person stole something, and the person was now like telling us that we should be careful of this particular person. The person was not aware, the person in question was not aware, but the other person was telling us we should be careful of this particular person, she's a thief, she does that, she steals and all of that. The way she made us like look at that person, we, we looked at the person like a thief and we were now conscious of our belongings. I was beginning then, I began, I began to wonder, I was like, why is this happening, why is this so? And I went to meet her and she was like, okay, this thing happened before and she doesn't steal again. She told me she no longer steals. But that particular thing that happened really dented her identity. That other person now saw her as a thief. Identity can make us or mouse. That's, how, that's why we need to be careful of the things we do. We need to be careful of how we treat people. We need to be careful of, of what we say. Because there are some things we will say now. Someone else, you might say some things to some people. Like you might feel it's a normal thing. But that thing will go like way down into the person. It might even hurt the person. Do you understand? So we need to be careful so our identity doesn't doesn't mar us. 
Like when you talk about marrying, it means injuring or denting someone. Like when I go to a place now and I'm asked to like, okay, maybe there's someone I know. Maybe there's someone I know and okay, I speak well of the person. When I speak well of someone, it's as really like, it's more of an advantage to that person. If I know someone before and I speak well of that person, it's more of an advantage to the person. So we should be careful of the things we say, how we, how we react and how we treat people as well. So we don't mar our identity. Thank, Thank you, you so much. I want Sandra to tell us how identity will make us then. Over to you. Thanks a lot, sir. Our identity can, the identity you see is uh, how you live your life, the appearance you portray to the world, and how people see you. Identity, identity can make you in the sense of what you do, the step you take, how your character you portray. If if I'm, I'm as a person, if I want to portray a good character and I want to make a good or portray a good identity that will make me, I'll start building on myself. That's knowing who I am. If I choose to be a pastor, then I'll start building on it, building on everything, all aspect that concerns it and portraying good picture to the world that they will see and even testify that yes, this person has really made an impact. At least being a pastor, or let me use that as a case study of showing how your identity can make you. Being a pastor, there are things you, you have people in your care and there are a lot of responsibility in your hands and there are a lot of work for you to do. So when you build on it and your work, you do your work perfect and your character match what you are doing, you have made a good identity and you have constructed a good identity to the world. I, I believe you are talking about integrity. So I want Prince Emmanuel to uh, do justice on that. Does integrity have anything to do with identity? Yes, integrity has everything to do with identity. Especially when you are in the aspect of your identity making you. Right? There are a lot of people, that's why I still talk about this consciousness. People have the, there was a time um, we, we, we had a, it was a talk show and then someone asked a question. He was like, is it possible for you to be spiritual too for seven? Doctor, is it possible? Now, yeah. you can actually fall if you are not conscious. But for you to be conscious, you, you, she has mentioned that. Then I think I still want to say something about um, how it can marry you. Now, there are people that are excelling their businesses and they are doing well. And a whole lot of people are applauding them, hailing them. But deep down, they are not satisfied with what they are doing. Many people are in that situation. And tell me, what do you stand to gain when you are doing something that you know that you are not really fulfilled? Though you are making money, though you are making empire, though, but you know that this is really not what we are born to do. So that is a good identity. But in the other way around, it's not making you happy. So that is what we talk about finding who you were born to be. Finding your true identity. Finding that thing that even there are some doctors, when they call them 2 a.m., please, there's a big, they, are, they will get angry. But there are some people that just go do it joyfully. Alright? So I'm trying to say that identity can make you or my you. It depends on if you can truly find your true identity, what you are born to do, and you do it, and you're going to be happy, and the people as well will be happy, and everyone is good. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So you need to examine yourself to discover who you are. I believe that I am identified with Christ. Very important. Your identity with Christ is much more important than any other thing if you want your identity to make you so examine yourself critically answer important questions about yourself and begin to ensure that your identity will make you instead of marrying you if you are identified with christ you will give your life to christ and you begin to share the love of God. Don't go about addition people's image. 
nobody wants to be associated with bad friends, smokers, drinkers. You must not be identified a child of God if you, if you are truly a child of God. I want to encourage our viewers out there. There's no time. I would have given us some advice. I would have asked our guests to, to give you advice on how you can uh, discover who you are. And there is no time. We are ending it for this episode at this point. I want to appreciate every one of you for being part of our program. Please, Emmanuel, thank you for being with us today. Yes, sir. And Sandra Daffy thank you, sir. and Ogechi. Thank you, God sir. bless you. Every one of you in the audience, I am grateful. And to our viewers, I want to say a big thank you. Continue to follow us on Facebook, on Instagram, on YouTube, Wisdom Class TV. And keep liking, subscribing, and sharing. God bless you. Thank you.